Welcome, I'm David Eichholz with David Richard Gallery here in New York City. Our new location is at 211 East 121st Street in East Harlem. And joining me today is uh, Shane Tolbert. He's originally from Houston and now living uh, in Abiquiu, New Mexico. And uh, this new body of work, in fact, is entitled Abiquiu Paintings. Uh, they were prepared pretty much November through first week of January. <laughs> and, uh, so that's what we want to review with you today and talk about some of the specifics about these paintings. So um, we'll work in a little bit about Shane's background. Uh, he's, as I said, from Houston originally, uh, has shown at McLean's Gallery, yes. and uh, did a residency here, uh, Albert Alby. Uh, what is it? I what that's yeah, it's called. The Alby Foundation. Alby Foundation. Foundation. And uh, here in Long Island, so he has some friends and colleagues and uh, affiliations here in New York. So, but this will be his first show in New York, his first show with our gallery. And uh, what we'd like to do is, it says, talk about some of these paintings. And we're standing in front of the largest painting in this uh, presentation. Um, it's a diptych uh, made in two equal uh, parts. And what I'd like to do is have Sheen talk about a couple things. Um, because the process is very unique. Uh, this is a, a, a process approach to painting, and uh, but yet there's uh, specific content driven by sort of the, the landscape of what have you around attitude, even though they're very abstract paintings. So what I'd like to do is actually talk a little bit about two particular things in this painting. Uh, one is the process, because I think this shows uh, a lot of what we'll see in the other works in terms of the process-driven uh, imagery. But at the same time, um, these structures uh, are present in most of these paintings. And so what I can do is tee that up a bit and talk to us a little bit about that. And they obviously relate to the blue structures as well. So let's talk about uh, your approach. Okay, yeah, absolutely. So uh, first off, the process, uh, a key tenet in my studio practice is thinking about invention. Uh, that's something that's constantly been in front of me as I'm working through painting and I'm building it up. So formal invention and a progression of this painterly language and history is very important to me. Uh, with that, I figured out certain ways of applying paint that would create surfaces that were uncommon in uh, painting practices. There's no brush application in a traditional sense. I apply paint on plastic sheeting and then apply that collage style to um, canvases and remove it. Uh, so what it does is it withholds like an echo or re remembrance of this industrialized um, folded plastic form. So it adds a layer of language that's really interesting and it builds a surface that captures light differently than a normal painting would. Um, to touch on what you're sharing about, like the structure of the image and this, these grid-like forms and these circle forms, um, being, being focused on environment where I am, I really do like to think about um, deconstructing that environment, restructuring it. Uh, it's living in a place like Abiquiu, it's really hard to grasp the scale of the environment, um, to think about, talk about, absorb these massive geological formations, this big sky. So uh, the blue in these, these dots is me structuring um, the, the daylight, the sky that I see in a way that makes sense for me, that's tangible and that can be integrated into an image in an interesting way. And then these larger structures though, um, do you want to touch on those here or in some of the other pieces where they're represented? Also? Yeah, we, we, can, we can talk about it multiple times as we move through. So in, in some instances, um, these elemental shapes, primary shapes, as I like to think of them, function um, as celestial bodies. There's a spiritual sense to it. In some cases, it's a direct uh, correlation to a moon or a lunar aspect. In other cases, it's just uh, capturing the energy of an atmosphere and putting it in front of you. Uh, so in this environment, 
from this painting, I was really thinking about just solar rays and sun space, heat of the day. How, how do you manifest something that you feel but you can't see? Um, I live in an environment where you, you feel the sun radiating off of cliff faces and rocks. And, and how, do you, how does that manifest? So you just sort of touched on that the next question, which was the, the color. So this one is evocative of uh, more uh, I used in sun, solar, yeah. you know, it's warmer, clearly. Um, and then some of these others are a bit more lunar. Some of them, like this one too, also uh, takes on a bit of an earth feel to it, uh, which is sort of interesting. The other thing too is um, it might be easier for people to see um, in high resolution images or something off the website yeah. or, or whatever. But the other thing with this plastic approach, I know it's plastic have memory, which is inherently something we all usually hate about plastic, <laughs> but it works to your advantage because things pool and puddle yeah. in those and, and remain. And so it's the residue of the process, but it becomes actually the architecture of yes. these pieces. So, um, but it's really interesting because now it really elevates uh, the surface quite a bit. And so you can cast shadows, you can actually see these ridges. Um, they, they really take on a bit more of a structural aspect to them. The one other thing too is because they seem more pronounced in here is it looks like these are cut and collaged like these the big yellow pieces. Is that the case or are, they, are these actually done like built up in layers on the same bit of plastic or a little bit of both? So uh, good question. There, that, that's, a, that's a great thing to think about. So in terms of making it um, what I love about this work is as I'm assembling it, I'm removing myself from it. So uh, what you see that is most covered up is the foundation of the painting. So this in itself, each of these sections were their own painting piece of plastic that I applied to the canvas. And then as you see layers like the blue orbs, that one on top of it, and then this plastic went on top of that. So I'm stacking them, and as they dry, there's a really labor-intensive process of delicately removing it and separating them, because plastic on plastic holds what paint. Um, so I have to just be really careful in that process uh, so I don't make smudges and smears. Things like that on the canvas. But well, look, if you, you live in a desert and not in Louisiana, <laughs> yeah, that's fast. <laughs> so that is an advantage of New Mexico. It's bone dry. Uh, great. So this one uh, kind of also touches on something uh, in the press release that I mentioned because you sort of layer so many different things. One is you talk about in your writings of centuries. You know, thousands of years, millions of years, uh, you know, of, yeah. of this time and how it's changed, uh, you know, the tectonics sort of landscape there in New Mexico. But on top, but then in your paintings, you deal with things that happen in seasonal cycles and in daily cycles. Oh, yes. And so, you know, there's uh, all these different layers and with big spans and little spans of time. But again, it's all dealing with a a time span, yeah, and a time collapse. So this sort of touches on that first part then, and uh, in terms of the, the color, in terms of the lunar, I mean the uh, solar sort of aspects, and uh, and sky and structure. So we can then cover some of the other pieces, things with the other pieces. Okay, absolutely. That's that's great. All right. So we're standing in front of uh, the next painting we'd like to talk about, which is Asikia elements, and. It's pretty colorful. It's probably the most colorful and most uh, diverse range of palette and shapes. So, um, why don't you kind of, this one's got a lot of texture in it too, but why don't you talk about uh, the palette clearly and then also this, this is a unique shape that you don't really see in many of the other paintings. Absolutely. Um, so, Asiki Elements comes for, look, I'll back up and share a little bit of personal history as well. Uh, since living in Abiquiu in the region, uh, I've been really involved in gardening and farming and it's a really bucolic lifestyle that I absolutely love. Um, but being in the region, I'm learning these century old traditions of Spanish farming and um, this painting was inspired by that year-long experience of um, 
being in nature, being in the sun, being in the elements, honestly, daily, and um, cultivating the land. So Asakia elements for me, building on this uh, continual emphasis of deconstructing things, is, is me just disassembling parts of um, that experience. So it's straightforward in the sense that there's earth, sun, and water, key ingredients for um, an agrarian lifestyle. But um, you're right, this is colorful, more so than the other ones, in, in the sense that there's a lot of high key colors and, mm -hmm. and gradient shifts and contrast. And the challenge for me, the questions that I was raised is how to, how to capture heat in another way, how, how to capture these very physiological aspects of being in these environments in color and in form um, in a compelling way. Well, the heat definitely comes through in um, a couple things here that are operating. One is they're not only high key colors and all yeah. warm tones, well, fairly warm tones, but dichroic combinations as well. So they really are sort of you know vibrational in, in that regard. And then layered on top of that, this really acid green. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted there to be a buzzing energy um, for it because nature's violent. It's a very volatile environment, so I wanted there to be this like intensity in it. Yeah, no, this one's definitely interesting. It's, it's so uh, it's a different. I really like this painting. Thank you. It's actually the one we're using for the <laughs> for most of the promotional materials. So it really kind of encompasses a lot of things all at once. But also there's just something about it, even though the colors are sort of rocking, there, there's something about it that there's a harmony that all of it pulls all together. But, uh, so you're thinking here that I'm sort of more solar as opposed to lunar. Yes. Pieces. Okay, got it. Yeah. More Earth. Exactly. Like, like letting, letting a form, like in, in this instance, that, that um, central form, these mm -hmm. circles are functioning, uh, rep representing just the terra firma and, and, and the flora. No, it's very successful in that regard. I really like that. That's great. Thank you. Abby, Abby, Snow. Abby Q. Snow, that's right. So, clearly it looks winter. And, um, so yeah, go ahead, because this one's really interesting. There's a lot of layers. So, well, I'm glad that you're touching on time uh, because you're right, there's a macro and a micro time, and not to get too far off of a tangent, but the plastic works for me to create a sense of erosion that you can uh, capture in other painterly approaches. Uh, it captures that real effectively, and, and that's a signifier of time as well, it's transition. But for Abaqui Snow, you're right, it, we're, we're, I'm bringing it in, it's a lot narrower, we're talking um, seasonal time, mm -hmm. we're talking something more immediate, and the beauty of being in this high, high desert environment, right on the cusp, uh, in a valley between two magnificent mountain ranges, is that you're able to experience, because it's high altitude, a, a true like traditional winter season uh, in a desert environment. So constantly in the back of my mind is just like, is, is dealing with light passing on Earth, how, how that's embedded in the memory of the ground. And you touched on a good point. These are lunar elements. And I like thinking of the poetics um, of reflected light onto the moon, uh, from the sun back onto the earth. And like, if you could get a sunburn from moonlight, how many centuries would that take? Like, what would the light be like? You know, like, it's it's really it's strange. I don't have answers to it, but this was a night painting for me in capturing it in an environment of Adobe and understanding heat in broader ways. You know, it's also interesting, um, and, and partly it's, it, it evokes this thought because of nearly where you live. Um, yeah. 
being in you know, Georgia O'Keeffe country. But um, what, what museum is that painting in? The huge one that's in the clouds. The clouds. That is uh, at the Art Institute. Yeah, yeah. at the Art Institute, yeah. It's yeah. the connector staircase. But anyway, yeah, so this one, it, um, it, it's different, you know, obviously. But, but still, because uh, a lot of people don't realize there's snow in New Mexico, you know, all the time. You go, oh, I bet it, you guys can't wait to get out of this New York winter and go back to New Mexico. It's like, like actually, we're at 7,000 feet. <laughs> it's the same temperature as here, uh, just not as wet. But um, anyway, uh, but yeah, that's kind of cool. I like this, the asymmetry of that. But where did red come from, though? Is this is sort of a warm sky looking at warm sky or I was just I mean I like the, the combination and the fact that it really ties into this sort of you know amber or not well it's amber and the sort of plum color yeah this aubergine uh, sort of uh, moon cycle but uh, what's the what's the uh, what about the red the, the red the red comes out of um, out of the adobe of the region uh, okay. you know it, it, it it's a it's an architectural aspect that I think is just inherent in Abiquiu and a lot of other small communities in the area. But it's it's capturing this like passing uh, meteorological moment through a window. Because like when I was working through this, it, it was it was going to end up being a portal, like creating a shade and for a space. I wanted there to be a passage, yeah. um, and that really is rooted in. And just the well, there's really several. And this one actually is probably, oddly, uh, the most uh, landscape. Absolutely. And uh, part of it is because it's horizontal. <laughs> but uh, aside from that, but there are multiple portals. There's several points of entry here in layers. You know, there's this the black sky, the red, and blue sky. So I mean, you have these sort of um, telescoping. But it reverses with the way you normally would think of color, I mean, except for this one, you know. I mean, yeah. uh, it, this one definitely pulls you in, um, despite the fact that we have the red which comes forward, you know. So it's not the typical telescoping effect of color, but uh, but it's simply portals, and it's interesting that you know, um, like Holy Savona was very interested in um, motion. Yes. And you're deploying, probably unbeknownst to you, a lot of the same things that he figured out during the 80s and 90s, but he brought in temporality. And so time was a key element uh, because, you know, when you think of time, things move, things happen. And so, you know, you sort of fill in the blanks uh, with this. But it's sort of interesting to think about that because I mentioned that because the show in the other room is a show of only some moments. Yeah. And you happen to like Luis Bowman, and he also oh, happens to be lived in New Mexico. So, anyway, it's just sort of interesting now that I see these paintings together, I'm realizing there's a little bit of more relationship than I originally had thought. So, I think this is a really uh, very successful painting in terms of capturing a lot of the different things um, you know, that you did, but it's, um, it does definitely have this landscape feel with this yeah. sort of effect of snow. And again, that's all triggered by the title, you know, yeah. and, and knowing about you. But even still, I think if you pondered it long enough and the rest of the work and the fact you definitely pick up on the fact that these are Earth elements, you know, or, or you know, astral elements. And um, I think, you know, as you study these, you start realizing they're, it's very Earth yeah. related, Ground not specifically landscape. Exactly. So, uh, but anyway, it's a very successful piece. Thank you. So Shane, we're in front of one of the three smallest paintings in the show. So that's what's interesting about the show too is the uh, range of sizes. And uh, but this one's a very interesting painting. Um, it's small, yes, but it's the composition. Even though it's got a lot of negative space, there's something very powerful in this. Um, and there's uh, basically three shapes, but the palette's interesting and the diversity of the palette. So to me, it kind of evokes that the large sphere feels very Earth-like, yeah. looking at the Earth from some distance. But then it's like these are two different moons, like two nice. different seasons or something is yeah. the vibe I get out of it. But like I said, it's a small painting, but I think it's particularly noteworthy 
from its composition, and I think it's just a very interesting, su su successful painting in this series, uh, worthy of, I think, uh, hearing a little bit more about it. Uh, so, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, for me, I was interested in uh, magnetism and polarity, and, um, you know, capturing these moments, there's definitely lunar aspects to these two works, um, but I wanted them to, I wanted them to correspond in a way, like, almost as if they're siblings, but you know, they're functioning for different elements. Uh, on, on the left is definitely earth-based, and on the right is definitely sky-based for me. Um, so, you know, in, in my mind, this, like, eternal logic of, like, when I'm piecing together these paintings, it can get kind of esoteric. Um, but, you know, there's this underlying dynamism of shifting and activity that you know these both capture so well and I, I want these bursts of energy this like kinetic energy to to just be projected in a very straightforward way well that's it's it, i think it's one thing that's very interesting about this work as i said when i first looked at them being that i'm probably more rooted in abstraction in the yeah. history of abstraction and in formal concerns in art since the 60s. Um, it, that's what I think is really interesting about this work is this nuance, um, as you just described in this piece. When you look at it, it's probably not what the average person takes away from it. Of course. But yeah. uh, knowing though that all your work is sort of grounded in earth and earth elements, and of course when you start talking about solar and lunar body, bodies and, you know, uh, this you know, anything uh, dealing uh, astrologically, you're dealing with you know all this, a lot of basic physics. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and uh, and there's you know, some basic uh, chemistry you were talking about in terms of you know polarities and magnetism and what have you. But so I think it's kind of interesting that um, it's this work is very abstract on face value, yeah. but there's a lot of underlying uh, thought and. Uh, grounding, of course, in your interest in, in sort of the, your environment, this landscape, not landscape per se, but just sort of what you're kind of dealing with, as we said, with these different levels of time, macro and micro levels of time, and uh, things that have changed over time. This is sort of an interesting one because you're now dealing with these orbs that you definitely get the sense of these, something sort of rotating something yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and happening here. So I think that, that makes it also a very successful piece when you look at the rest of this work you're just knowing what the backdrop is. That's why I think it's a very small, but a very, I think, a strong piece. And Shane, the title is? Oh, um, Two Windows. So we're in, the, in front of two paintings that are very related, and uh, I'll get out of the way here so you can see. Um, and these definitely feel more lunar. Absolutely. And so, um, and there's a couple of other things, you know, have, they have the same structure, but obviously uh, different palettes and different things going on here. And um, so that's why I'd kind of like you to talk about, and I think these just really work well together as a pair. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and then kind of get onto the lunar cycle of things we've touched on. We touched on a little bit uh, with the Abbey Hughes Snow, yeah. but, um, and in the last painting, this little small one, but. Um, these two are much larger and have a lot more presence uh, and definitely more of a focus, it feels like, on the lunar. Absolutely. So, uh, both lunar warmth and nightshade were the start of the show for me. Um, so, as, as things shifted for the show, this was like a very clear point at the beginning and a really tight focus um, of an obsession with the night sky and, and living out in a remote area uh, experiencing moon cycles every year. Um, leaving the city and all the light pollution, can't remember the last time before moving to Abiquiu that I would actually experience a night sky. And since moving out, you know, night hikes, being outdoors throughout the night, um, I just wanted to figure out a way to um, translate that, those experiences in painting. So it's really grounded in being an avenue and living through moon cycles. And then 
figuring out a way to structure it. Um, uh, stacking was really helpful, uh, thinking through different, like multiple movements, like it's all the same move but at different times and trying to think about how it could change through the night, how it can like, look different, but it was, that's how it was sourced. Hmm. Interesting, because um, the other one, uh, the ABQ Snow, was an interesting one because they go horizontal across. Yes. And I think, again, though, as we touched on with that painting, um, I think that's what gives it more of a landscape feel to it. Absolutely. And immediately kind of anchors you in that thought process. Whereas this, um, also, this composition where you have these sort of um, geometric structures, yeah. and sort of this, uh, in, in both of them, you have different values of color um, that is sort of, I mean, it balances them nicely, but it's very different it than, uh, in, in that regard, and, and basically more abstract, I think. So the spatters are different between the two. I was just kind of curious what that's all about. Of course, see, this one's nightshade, so that kind of makes sense, the dark blue. And then these um, look like olives. <laughs> so, <laughs> martinis, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Are there any significance in sort of the abstract or the little sort of structures? Yeah, so all of these small chromatic hues um, weren't really specific to like capturing the lunar aspect, but it, it was a bridge for me to consider uh, the geological formation part of the work that followed. So being in these spaces, these environments, and you know, actually, I'll back it up even so Cy Twombly is a very important artist to me, and he has a massive painting at the Manila Collection. It's over 100 feet wide. And I was sitting there one day, and I had spent years looking at this painting and going in there. And one day there was this old German photographer sitting by himself, and he showed up to see that painting. He traveled to Houston to see that painting because Cy Twombly was an old friend of his. Mm -hmm. um, and we were sitting there and he just started talking to me about the painting and he completely opened it up to me. Um, and like in this space, he established this ground. So it went from being this pure abstraction of this totally realized space, volume and depth, being on a cliff, looking down at fishing boats, which were just these squiggles. And that, that experience never left me. Um, so, on my night hike, looking over Cerro Paternal and all of these like tiny mesas and rock forms that dotted the landscape in the valley from where I was at Chimney Rock and Ghost Ranch over there, I started thinking about like placing these um, hmm. as these like uh, distant spaces but visible, and then the push out is. Um, an early part of me thinking of erosion for the work in the show. Hmm. That's a very interesting explanation. Yeah, I like these two as a pair. Thank you. Very good. Well, thank you very much. This is a great conversation. Um, anything you. else that we didn't touch on you'd like to? You know, I, I I feel like you really covered all the themes of the show and the logic of the show. Yeah. So I feel good about it. Thank you. Hope everybody can see the show in person. Thanks. <laughs>